being eight days old as God had commanded. And Abraham was an hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. That's the words of Romans. The fourth chapter, isn't it? Isn't that what he says? That God called things that be not as though they were, which means to, which means to bring something alive that is dead. And then he says in Romans, the fourth chapter, and you can't understand this unless you understand that over there. Romans 4. Romans 4. God quickens the dead, makes alive the dead, and calls things that be not as though they were something that was not, was something that was, was dead. And who against hope, verse 18, believed in hope that he might be the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be, and Isaac shall thy seed be called. And the resurrection. And being not weak in faith, he considered his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, it's talking about his loins. He had no sperm left. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. It ceased to be a, with her after the manner of women in that 18th chapter of Genesis. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He believed God, and God said, you're too old to have children, but you're going to have one. And you're going to, all the earth's going to be blessed, and there's going to be an Israel come out of this seed. Out of, and there'll be 12 sons and they'll come out of that. I hope this makes it plainer. And then in that 21st chapter, Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh. So, and Isaac means laughter. And she laughed when she heard that she'd have a child. God said, she laughed. And she thought I didn't laugh. And he said, yes, she did. So that all that will hear me, that here will laugh with me. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah shall have given children suck? For I have borne him a son in, my old, in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne into Abraham, mocking. Therefore, and how old would... How old would Ishmael be at this time? Huh? He'd be 14, wouldn't he? Because he's 14 years older, according to that last verse of the 16th chapter. He's 14. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son. I think we've read that before, haven't we? Where? Fourth chapter of Galatians. And I can't read this without teaching that fourth chapter of Galatians. Gosh, and I'm about out of time, ain't I? Just read a little bit. Well, cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. Look at the fourth chapter of Galatians. You can't understand the fourth chapter of Galatians unless you understand this. Galatians 4 and verse 22. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, Hagar, and the one by a free woman, Sarah. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. That was Abraham and Sarah's idea. God said, that's not your son. Illegitimate. Yep, illegitimate. But he of the free woman was by promise. I promised you in the 15th chapter you'll have a son. You don't have to help me in the 16th chapter of Genesis. I'm going to give you one at the time appointed. And she will be the mother of all this Jewish nation that shall rise. And it will be 12 sons. Which things are an allegory. For these are the two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai, the law, which gendered to bondage, which is Hagar. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answer to Jerusalem, which now is, Ishmael will answer to Isaac. Ishmael will be under the rule of Isaac and Jacob. Which now is and is in bondage with her children, but Jerusalem, which is above, is free, 
which is our mother, is the mother of us all. Jerusalem's our mother and God is our father. Isn't that true? Because sons do the will of the father. And Jesus said, my brothers and sisters do the will of the father. For it is written, rejoice thou barren that bearest not. I wonder who that might be talking about. Sarah? Rachel? Hannah. Boy, you got a list of them, don't you? <laughs> Break forth and cry, thou that travailest not for the desolate hath many more children than she that hath an husband. The one that hath the husband, that's the church. There's a lot more people going to hell than is going to heaven. Many are going to find the broad way, few will find the narrow. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. Isaac was promised, and it was impossible for her to have Isaac, but she did. According to men it was, but with God all things are possible. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Ishmael is persecuting Isaac, and that's going on today. That's the fight that's over there right now. Even as it is now, Nevertheless, what saith the Scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. I think that's what we just read over there, wasn't it? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman or with Israel. The heir and the kingdom and the land belongs to Jacob and his twelve sons. Doesn't it? I hope if nothing else that assures you of understanding that. This battle over there, it, you can forget that Ishmael is going to win this. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. And it said the free was Jerusalem, and that's our mother. Jim, that's the same battle that's going on. That's, that's, the inner and the outer man. that's the inner and the outer man, isn't it? And it's the outer man is the promise to us, and the inner man is the promise. And the outer man is the bondage that we're in I'm out of time I know lessons like this are harder to understand but if you start to get the picture of Genesis you're going to understand Israel but you just stick with me as we go through this I'm going to read through it just like I'm reading through this chapter I'm just going to read through it and comment on it I don't I'm not going to have time to get into every part of it but I hope this will help you some let's pray Father we thank you for truth and for your word Thank you for this magnificent picture that you painted for us of Israel. And we are spiritual Israel. Thank you for your word, truth. Cause us to understand, strengthen our lives. And God will praise you and glorify you for everything. In Christ's name we pray, man. Amen. It was a basket or something to carry things in, like they'd go out in the field and they would gather wheat or something or corn. Oh, they, yeah, they gather the wheat in the mandrakes? Yeah. Okay. We think of a mandrake as a geese or type of a duck. That's not what it was. That's what I was, I was uh, confused on. Because I was, thought it was a fruit or some kind of flower. No. It's, it was a 